So let's have a look now at something that you might find in production where the concept of deforming or animated is going to be more useful. So in here we have this character that I download from Mixamo. And this is the animation. And on the left I have a box that I fractured. There's nothing fancy going on, but if you want to learn what or how I did this, uh, just have a look at the file and have a peek inside of this node. After the fracture is set, I have an RPD configure where I'm setting the name to ground. And then I have a time shift, just to keep the first frame. So let's proceed with the setup. The first thing that we have to know is that this character is deforming, so we cannot just set this to animated static object, because the shape is changing all the time. So this gives you the idea immediately that you have to use deforming static object rather than animated static object. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a divide. I tend to do this for colliders uh, or in general when I'm going to use booleans or fractures. So you understand this better. I'm going to just create the setup in the wrong way. So you will see what the problems are and then we will come back and fix everything. So let's create a dub network. Let's connect the geometry of your character to dubs. So at this point, you know that bullet is expecting packed geometry. So you need to use the RBD configure object. Let's change the name to character. And let's add a point wrangle where we are going to set the attributes that bullet is expecting. The first one I'm going to set is active. And we want this character to not be active. We want it to follow the animation. So it can't be active. So active is going to be zero. Animated. It's going to be zero in our first example and basically because the character is deforming. And lastly, deforming, it's going to be equal to one. So bullet knows that every single frame, it has to rebuild the shape representation or the volume representation of the character. So now we have the collision of the character. Now let's merge together the ground and the character. Let's put the collision of the character on the left. And let's connect the merge to the DOP network. So now we have everything we need. Both geometries are packed geometries and they have the attributes that bullet needs. Let's dive inside the DOP network and let's create an RBD packed object. Let's activate the toggle for overwrite attributes. So it uses whatever comes from subs. And let's change the geometry source to first contact geometry. So it brings the geometry that we connected into the first imp. Let's create a multiple solver and let's create a rigid body solver. And let's plug this into the second input. So the next thing we need is a gravity force and we need a ground plane so the geometry doesn't fall. So let's create a ground plane. Let's merge these two things together and let's change the position of the ground plane so it's below the ground. So if I press play now the ground should fall and the creature should follow its animation. Let's have a look. And as you can see something is failing so I must have made a mistake so let's go back up. And I didn't set the attributes for the ground. So let's copy this point wrangle. Let's connect it to the ground. And let's set active to 1. And deforming to 0. So this is telling bullet that these pieces of geometry should be affected by forces and by collisions. So now we should have everything we need. Let's go back inside. And if you press play you can see that the ground is falling and it's interacting with the creature. In theory, if this is the first time you do this, you might think, okay, so this is all you need to do. But if you look carefully, you can see that the geometry is being pushed even where the creature is not touching the ground. So what might be happening? If you go to the RBD packed object, you toggle off the display geometry. You go to bullet data and show guide geometry. You can see that what bullet is using for the collision is actually this weird shape. And this weird shape, it's something called a shrink wrap of the geometry. So if you look at the character and then you create a shrink wrap, you can see that this is what bullet is creating inside for the collision, but we don't need this. We actually need something that resembles the shape of the character. So before the RBD configure happens, let's create a convex decomposition. So we fracture the character into smaller chunks that then can be used by bullet. So let's create a convex decomposition. Let's plug it after the divide. And the first thing you need to do is change this max concavity so it's a value less than 1. So if you start decreasing the value, you can see that the more accurate those shapes resemble the shape of the character. Let's go even smaller. So 0 0.2 is much better. You can see that now it looks like the actual character that we were using before. 
The values that I used on my test were 0 0.5, so we have less shapes, so let's use that. Now if I go back to bullet, the collision representation of the geometry should be much better, so let's have a look at that. Now you can see that the representation or the show guide geometry is actually showing you the geometry of the character in the same way that we saw it in subs. So let's deactivate this and display geometry and press play again. You can see now it's slower and it's slower because it has to rebuild that volume in every frame but also because I made a mistake. You can see that in every frame the geometry is not only changing its shape but it's also changing the way it's fractured. So you need to go back and make sure that it's only happened once. So let's create a time shift. Let's make sure that this only happens on one single frame. So now the convex decomposition is not going to change. It's going to remain constant. Let's create a point deform. And make sure that the geometry that goes in the first input is the geometry of the character when it's static. And what goes in the third input is the geometry that is animated. So now you have the geometry that it's being the, the composed by the convex decomposition node but it's also following the animation another thing that is good to keep in mind is that this convex decomposition is generating one attribute called segment that segment is different for each one of the pieces so we can use it to represent or to create the name so let's create a primitive wrangle let's call it set name and let's set the name to be character plus i2a i segment so basically what's happening here is that the first string of the name is going to be character but then we are appending to the character the number of the segment that this created. Because this number is an integer, we need to use this function to convert that integer into a string so it can be appended to character. So let's plug this to the point of form. Let's have a look at the geometry spreadsheet. You can see that now the name is character zero and if you scroll down it's going to change for each one of these segments. Because we are setting the name here, now this RBD configure is not going to set the name. And it's going to respect the name that come from before. But what's happening is that name, it's being promoted to point. So Bullet can use it. This is still the same, so let's go back to the DOP network. And let's press play. So you can see now that the geometry or the fractures are not changing. And the collisions are quite fast and is using the actual geometry of the character or a representation of that geometry that is much more accurate than what we have before where it was using just a shrink wrap this is all well and good but what about the option of having this as animated static object let's have a look at that now let's make some room for the other example this was the deforming geometry and the next thing we will do is create the animated static object. Let's select everything and put a backdrop and let's call this the forming static object. And do remember that this is set to the forming because in the point wrangle here we set the forming to be 1 and animated to 0. So before we actually create that part of the setup, let me show you what will happen if you set this to animated rather than the forming. Let's change this to 1 and let's change this to 0. And go back inside docs. And let's press play. As you can see the character is not moving and by this point you should already imagine that it is not moving because the intrinsic transform is not changing on every frame. So you can see it's always the identity. I'm gonna keep the character here on the top. Let's copy this divide although again you don't really need it. And the next thing I'm gonna do is a time shift to keep the first frame only. And now I'm thinking, how can I represent this shape with shapes that I can actually transform? And one idea might be to use spheres. It might not be as accurate as this one, but this will give you an idea for your future projects. And you can try to make something better than just spheres. So let's create a scatter. Uh, this is just a normal scatter that it's happening only in the first frame. Let's keep the count to one. And the next thing we need to do is create a copy to point. And we will be copying spheres on those points. I want a very, very low rest representation of this sphere. So I'm going to change the primitive type to polygon and the frequency to 1. Let's connect the spheres to the first input of the copy points and the points to the second input. And let's change the size of the spheres. I'm going to set it to 0 0.1. 
So now you can see we have a sphere for each one of these points and the shape kind of resembles the shape of the creature. So with this done, let's create an RPD configure. This is going to pack each one of those pieces and we need to set the name to something meaningful. So let's change this to spheres. The next thing we need is the attributes that we also set here. So just before I forget, I'm going to set this back to zero on animated and one to deforming. I'm going to copy this wrangle and let's paste this here. Let's change this to animated and let's change this to deforming equals zero. But by this point, the geometry is not changing its shape. It's not deforming. It's not animated. So let's put a point deform. Let's connect the point deform to the time shift. And let's connect the third input to the actual moving geometry. So now we have moving spheres. And you can see that the intrinsic transform is being updated, which means that bullet will know what to do with it. Let's switch these things rather than using this geometry. We will be using the spheres. And let's go back into the DOP network. Let's press play. And as you can see, we have something similar to what we had before. But in this case, rather than colliding with the convex decomposition representation of the character, we are colliding with the sphere. And we didn't have to change anything here because we have set override attributes to be on. So it's using whatever comes from subs. So let's review this again. The only reason this is working with bullet is because we are setting this to animated equal one, but the transform is changing. So rather than rebuilding the shape representation of each one of these spheres, what's doing is creating one volume representation for each one of these spheres, and then it's transforming that volume with the transform that each one of those packet primitives have. Let's go back in DOPS. Let's have a look at the show guide representation of this character. And as you can see, it's the same shape. It's just the spheres, but they are just being transformed. So these are two very useful ways to represent the geometry of a 